But this is, the fifth estate does not require a universal access at all. It requires a critical mass of individuals who are online because you can relay information face-to-face -face, on wireless networks. And as long as you have a critical mass, uh, what, you know, 30, what, 35 percent of China is online, but they have more people online than there are Americans on the planet. So they have a critical mass. Indonesia, 11 percent. They're about the large, one of the largest countries online in the world. They have enough people. India, 7 percent online, 100 million people looking at government, trying to hold them accountable for issues like bribery and other issues. So the fifth estate is a real phenomena that is developing, and I want to, and I, the only, one point here also that came up today is this challenge of which is more powerful. Are networked individuals more powerful than the state or more powerful than the press? No, of course not, because that's an unrealistic expectation. But what we're talking about, the press, was the press more powerful than the state? No. I mean, the press can close down, I mean, the state can close down the press, and it tries to in many countries. Um, but in a pluralist, in a realist interpretation of democracy, where you have multiple independent uh, uh, centers of, of power, well, the press can add an independent voice and help hold other institutions more accountable. Likewise, the fifth estate can add another element of more pluralistic control to, uh, the, to a democratic system, a, a realistic democratic system, not direct participation of all in, in, real, in uh, sort of online democracy, but in terms of empowering citizens to hold other institutions accountable. Now, the hard part is squaring this with social movements. Um, Clearly, some social movements, and I think this was really well described by uh, Professor Castells, are uh, collective, collaborative network organizations that are bottom-up developed, that are horizontal in nature, and that really survive on collective intelligence more so than collective action. They actually uh, are informed and can challenge government and other institutions. Uh, some are small. Uh, you can ha actually have you know, the fifth estate is almost like a social movement one at a time because people can be empowered by the internet, but they can also support with others. So the group of type 1 diabetic uh, families with type 1 diabetes of, uh, children, they are in a sense a social movement as, as well, and, uh, and this can grow. But they also can become bureaucracies. I mean, M Michelle's iron law of oligarchy. Uh, you know, it's, it's usually any organization is controlled by a small number of middle-class professionals and, and so forth. And they, if they do become bureaucracies, as you said, Professor Kestel, so they, they, you know, the, the networked individuals will actually hold them accountable as well. And they can reject them. And they can move. So in a way, there's this almost self-protective system in which if, if uh, social movements become bureaucratic, top-down organizations, they can be challenged by their own members who are informed because they are not s dumbed down by simply following a movement that they're actually looking, uh, they're researching the issues just as actively as the organization itself. So the fifth estate enables social accountability um, uh, of social movements, of the press, of government, uh, I think this is a realistic perspective. It does not overstate over, uh, our expectations of somehow the, the, the online public controlling the state or controlling the press, uh, but it certainly becomes a, another element in a pluralistic democratic system. We just finished case studies in China where we found actually networked individuals able to uh, change government policy in a variety of areas when the press was completely uh, 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 controlled in a variety of ways. They could not control uh, online participation and they were able to stop a, for instance, stop a chemical plant, fire uh, some officials to, uh, and so forth, and, and to uh, expose some uh, corrupt practices, et cetera. However, the, the real problem, which I, I don't think we've talked about enough today, is that the fifth estate is quite vulnerable. 
I don't think this is deterministic at all. I think it it's only exists because policy and practice enables it to. If you look at some, the potential of inappropriate regulation of the internet, a lot of countries are moving towards regulating the internet as if they're broadcasters. Wanting the inter, uh, just as China does, they want the internet service providers to regulate content uh, as if they were broadcasters and stop all uh, uh, in, in, uh, traffic that is potentially commercially sensitive, like copyrighted material or uh, ch uh, material changes, dangerous for children, et cetera. And the final point is also there, this move towards big government surveillance, I would say. Okay, the government has discovered big data. <laughs> and that is what is part of, the, part of the move in a number of countries to looking at all email, all web, all web searches, uh, so forth. And, uh, and to the degree to which government views big data as, an, as a way to surveil the public, um, you know, we, we're in a real vulnerable place where government can inappropriately regulate or use technology in ways that really have a chilling effect and undermine what is a potentially new development in democratic control of the fifth estate. Thank you very much. Thank you.